Hello everyone, welcome back to my Sling TSI build. I just wanted to kind of go over what I've done for the last couple of weeks. I uh, probably haven't gotten as much time in as I would have liked, but I did get the doors finished. Uh, I, I talked about the pilot side door last video, I think, um, where I had, uh, I had moved these around the hinges. Um, and then what I did was because I had drilled them out oversized, I f marked exactly where I wanted the hinge really well. And then I filled all of it with structural epoxy. And then I re-drilled the single hole right where I wanted it. Um, so I had to do that with the other side as well um, because I, I just wasn't happy with the fit with the, uh, the holes that were made by Sling. And uh, I had a question posted um, on my last video that talked about the fact that I, I installed the window with the door off the plane. And uh, somebody had asked if they thought that I might have uh, warped the door um, by putting the, the straps on to hold the window in place. And I have no idea. Um, the door is really, really stiff. Um, and I was really careful when I put the straps on. Um, it was just finger tight, just just to keep pressure on. Um, but it's still possible that I, uh, you know, somehow altered the, uh, you know, how it fit um, by by somehow getting it out of uh, out of whack. So anyway. Um, the reason I, I fitted them off the plane instead of on the plane, which was my original, is I just didn't have any help. I was off work for a few days, and I really wanted to get the windows done because it was a big all-day kind of project, and I just did it by myself. Um, and if you do it by yourself, I, I started to try to do it on the plane, and it, I just decided it was it was not going to go well. I just really needed another another set of hands if I was going to try to do the windows by myself on the plane. So I did it on my bench. I don't think I warped anything. I think it just, it, the, the doors just needed some help, but, um, I would certainly caution anybody. Um, if you can do them on the plane, it just takes away that possibility. The other thing I'll throw out there is if you, if you get your canopy with the windows in place, really pay some attention to how they fit before you remove them that first time. Um, when I got my canopy, I pulled the doors off and I didn't really pay any attention to how they fit. Uh, so I can't say if they were great at the time uh, or not. Um, it's just one of those things I was, you know, anxious to get to it. And I painted the inside of the canopy and I pulled the doors and, and, um, uh, everything off to get ready for paint. And I, I didn't pay attention. So I don't know how well they fit um, when they came out of the factory. And some of the misalignment could be my own fault. I have no idea. So um, anyway, I would probably say if you, if you have someone who can help you, I would install the windows while it sits on the plane. After you kind of check out the windows, or the, I should say the door frame, uh, to make sure you're pretty happy with how it fits. Um, that way you know. <laughs> Do that work before you put the windows in. That's not how I did it. Uh, and I may have paid the price of spending an extra day working on this project. But uh, pretty happy with how everything turned out. Um, they, uh, I did this a little differently. I did the screw heads on the outside going in. I have not uh, put any sealant in here yet. Um, I imagine we're gonna be taking these doors off for paint and I just figured I'd wait. Um, this, when I'm in my phase one and all, this plane is gonna be in the hangar every night. So uh, I'm not real worried. I also have not uh, put any uh, silicone in these either um, or trimmed them yet. I figured I would wait and do that uh, after paint. I'm gonna be painting this plane, professionally having it painted, after I'm done with my phase one hours. The, the gas strut 
there's uh there's several instructions in the in the sling manual in the latest iteration i had the parts for one version and the gas strut from another version <laughs> so i ended up having um to kind of just wing it um the uh the gas strut that I had came with these uh, these on both sides, uh, but it also had this little black plastic threaded um, piece here. Um, so you remove you removed this from up here, and then you put this uh, this black um, plastic piece up here, and then that's what you attach at the top, and then. Uh, you use this on the bottom into the uh, the bracket supplied by Sling, and I just painted this black. So I took a lot of I could barely move the gas strut after I installed it. It was so tight. Uh, so I ended up I've probably done a a quickie release of nitrogen eight times, and I'm still think I could release some more. Uh, so your mileage may vary on that, but that's how mine is. I, I could not, on my workbench, I could not compress this. Once it was installed, getting the angle and using the leverage of the door, I still could hardly compress it. So I took a lot of the nitrogen out before I really even closed it one, you know, all the way the first time. So just so you're aware of that, uh, you may have that same issue as I did. Uh, for these little gadgets, I did, uh, here, I'll show the, the one across the way here. Um, I pretty much did what the factory had, except for this part right here. There's a bushing inside of a bushing here, and I had the brass bushing, but I only had, or had four of these brass ones, it's not very focused, um, that kind of just helps the, it kind of helps the hook go under and this kind of moves. And then there's a stainless steel bushing underneath it that the screw goes through. Well, I got four of the brass, but only two of the stainless steel uh, inner bushing. So I, uh, instead of waiting on sling to try to get me a part, because I'm still waiting, I'm at month five for some parts. Um, I bought these on Amazon, which is just a... <laughs> a uh, little stainless steel tube that was the right dimensions. They were seven bucks. I got them the next eh, two days, I think. Um, so I cut those and uh, used those for uh, the co-pilot side here. But uh, I had to do a little work um, getting everything fitted so that once the door closed, the, the handle closed like I wanted. Um, and then of course, you know, the adjusting that cover piece and getting the openings just right um, is a little bit of a trick. Uh, I did get uh, a little uh, rubber, ga uh, I don't know, grommet. I don't know what you'd call it. It's a, it's, it's a cap that's going to go in that hole uh, for both sides. Uh, so I can fill that in. And I will probably, for the top where the handle is, I have some edging that I think will fit really nice and uh, I'll apply that later. Uh, I mentioned in a couple of videos, I'm really trying not to get bogged down with cosmetic stuff. I really just want to get um, the, the big items done on the plane. So um, the other work I did this week was, uh, was I got the, the cowling, the oil doors fitted, got the hinges on, I did the uh, the cam locks. Um, again, oil door cam locks. Um, I uh, I got to order. I ended up doing seven to get the fit the way I thought it should fit. Um, and Sling doesn't send you enough for that, um, so I had to order. Um, well, I ordered four. And then I ended up, I still need two more, so I got to order two more. Um, that's not a big thing right now, but uh, next time I do a aircraft spruce order, I'll order um, a couple more. So uh, these I have not put on with the little retaining clips. Um, 
I had to, uh, I, I drilled them to the size specified in the manual, uh, but they really need to be just a little bit bigger. And a couple of these, they, they don't sit flush. So I've got to, um, when I pull the cowling off this week, uh, I'll pull those out and kind of just uh, hit it with my Dremel sanding wheel just very lightly. And then I think these cam locks, it's not focusing well. Um, they're just not flush. And I think I just need to make that hole just a smidge bigger. And then I'll put the retaining clips in. So anyway, um, this is the, the cowling is hard. I, it was hard for me. I mentioned that again in a couple of videos. Um, getting it fitted right and tight and aligned here at the prop. Um, I'm okay with the spacing. Um, the, a couple people had said that uh, after you fly the plane, the engine will sink down just a little bit as, the, um, as all the uh, engine mounts kind of settle in. So they said to do this a little higher than the cowling. Well, I ended up with a little bit higher than I would have liked. Uh, we'll see when it settles over time, if that kind of evens it up. But I'm not capable of making it more accurate than that. I decided if I kept playing with it, I, I may not end up with it any better than it was. Um, and I think I mentioned in another video, I glued this into place with structural epoxy. I had drilled out the holes but um, then I decided not to uh, countersink them and put the, the rivets in. So I used the rivet holes to get the structural epoxy and, and hold this tight. And then I removed them. Put, I put a bunch of weight on this. I had it upside down on my table. Um, I may have a picture of that I'll, I'll add in here. Uh, and then I just filled in the holes with um, some super fill. I haven't even, I haven't even sanded it yet. And then uh, this is round two of some super fill. While I had super fill out for this, I went ahead and, and put some more here. All that needs sanded on that. Um, and I also plan to put uh, super fill over these um, next time I get super fill out. Again, that's kind of a, in the evening, I can do little one, two hour projects in the evening after work. And this is the kind of stuff I like to do. Um, when I can't really tackle great big projects. So, um, oh, the last thing with the cowling, again, this was just sort of my nemesis. Um, I cut this piece too short for my, I just, I had a gap here that was bigger than I was willing to tolerate. So what I did, and it was kind of an experiment, was I still had this strip here is I glued it back on with some uh, structural epoxy and sanded it down. And it, <laughs> you can see the seam, but I think if I just a little super fill and some more sanding and that'll disappear. And let me tell you, I, I tried to break it off just because I wanted to make sure it was not going to come off. Um, and it's on there. It's as strong as the rest of the cowling. So, I put it back on, I remarked it using the tape method, and I'm gonna recut that sometime this week. Um, again, I don't know if you can see, I, something must have shifted between doing the other side and this side, and I just, I cut it too short. So I'm just adding a few millimeters back on with this method. Um, and this gap, I had this gap tighter before I installed these. Um, I think in the process of match drilling these holes to match the, uh, that, I don't know, the cowling strip in here, um, somehow it, it pulled away just a little bit. Again, there may be something I can do to fix that. I'm not sure to get it back tighter uh, to fill in that, or I may just fill that in with some super fill uh, at some later stage. I haven't made a determination on that. So anyway... Um, I think with uh, some uh, high build primer and some sanding and some body work, I can make this look nice. And then my paint shop can go after me and uh, do even more. Um, so we'll see how it goes. But I think that's it for this week. I've run a little long for, uh, for, for such a simple update. But uh, 
hopefully any of that was helpful. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, post them away. And uh, for those of you building, good luck. Have a good week.